Everyone, how are you? Happy 2023. It's the first time this year I've had a chance to say hi to y'all. And I had a great start to the year. How about you? And super great start, but kind of had a couple of things happen. So I want to tell you all about my year so far. And especially for you guys who want to hear about my injury, which uh, I haven't talked about yet. So this is the first time I'm going to talk about it and I'll let you know all about it. So happy to be here with you this year. Remember, just go ahead and subscribe and, you know, click on that thing. We get the updates so that way you know when we're coming on, what's happening, and I love spending time with you guys. So let's start out. Um, last year, I played four tournaments. Last summer, it was a little bit rushed to come back out to, to play the events, and I decided to take some time to really work on my game. Took like four months of literal nonstop practice, and then so excited, went to the Australian Open, or was planning on going to the Australian Open, and that's a um, spoiler alert. <laughs> but went down to Australia and was just so excited and so ready. So went to New Zealand first. I've had some Super great experiences there, uh, winning the tournament. I think that was 2015. Should we verify that? Maybe something like something like that. 2015, maybe. Um, played a finals once. Lots of great memories at this tournament, and I have not been there in quite a few years. So, and I remember the last time I was watching. I remember watching Serena play the finals. Like glued to my seat at 4 a.m. in the morning. So, um, good memories for both of us there. So, got to New Zealand beginning of the year. Let me tell you the first thing that happened. So the first thing that happened is we get there and I have no bags. And most of all, I had no racket. So that part was really upsetting because when I got there with no racket, I'm like, I've worked four months and I have no racket and I'm gonna get to New Zealand and I can't practice, are you kidding me? So we're on the phone trying to like, me and Eric, we're on the phone trying to call the airline. At the airport, there's literally no service. Someone fills out a piece of paper, if you can imagine. In this digital age, someone fills out a piece of paper and gives it to us. And we're like, oh my God, there's no record of this. So it was pretty crazy. And I'm sitting there just really upset and I never get upset, but at this point, I was so upset because I had no rackets. I sit down and I think, okay, we got to find a racket that's similar to mine and then we'll put our own weight on it because my racket is custom and a custom weight. And so we'll go buy some lead tape and in tennis you, you can customize your own racket if you like. You buy this lead tape, it has weight in it, you, you measure it, you, you, know, you weigh it and you put the tape like wherever you want. Some people put it on the racket head, other people put it on the grip. Um, but you can do that. So I was like, we'll find some lead tape, we'll find an exact racket like mine, and we'll just have to keep practicing. So Eric calls everyone, and finally he calls, I think, like a rep that he knows from, from Wilson, and somehow we get set up and we find this racket. And I have to tell you, I broke down in like eight chips and like candy bars. <laughs> I just was hungry and upset, and I had my moment, but we find this racket. I was so happy, and we got to practice that day, and Finally, about three days later, I finally got all of my bags and the big day came and it was time to finally play my match. And I haven't played a lot in the last couple of years. So every time I walk out in the court now, it's a very big moment for me because I know that I can play, but also when you haven't played a lot of matches at obviously the, the elite level, it's not easy. So I walked out there and I didn't feel so focused. I was like, where's my focus? Where's my focus? But finally I was able to get it. I played a great young American player. Um, great future for her coming up. And the next thing I know, by the time I got to the second set, I hit flow and I was up 5-0. It was such a great feeling to like hit this flow when you just start to like do and react to, to everything that you practice without thinking and it starts to flow. Felt so good. Obviously things I wanted to improve on in the match was just like the first thing, but it was great. And everything was awesome. The sun was shining and then it wasn't shining anymore because on Tuesday, it started raining. And let me tell you, it never stopped raining for the rest of that week. And I didn't know what was next for me, but I'm gonna tell you, so you'll know what I went through. So we get to the next match and I walk on the court. We did not know, it was my match was rained out from the day before. We get on the match on the next day and they say, well, you know what, if we can't play on the center court, 
we've got to play indoors. So there's an indoor like tennis court at the center. No, no stands, just indoors. And so they say, well, we go on the court. I had no idea where I was going to play. They said, not before two indoors. Suddenly it's 12.30 and I walk out on the main court because finally somehow it stops raining. And we play maybe two games and it starts, rain starts raining again. Um, we're off the court for maybe about an hour, hour, hour and a half. We get back on the court. We finish the first set. We get to the second set, and it just starts raining. And by this time, it's probably close to 5 o'clock, and I start at 12.30. So we wait another hour and a half or so. I get back on the court, but they change the whole court. I've never done this in my whole life, because typically a rule in tennis is that you have to finish your match on whichever court you start on. So that way you're not changing conditions completely. Can you imagine, like, in the middle of a you know, NFL game, I was about to call it a match, which I do with every sport, I call it a match, but in an NFL game, you suddenly stop the game, change the venue somewhere else completely and continue the game. So you can imagine that also tennis has this rule too, that you need, you need to kind of start the game where you finish. So, so never had this experience before, not indoor, outside, go indoors, completely different court, not as much light and finish the match. So we get in there and then, you know, finally I didn't win the, the second set and we finished the second set, we get into the third. And I was, you know, playing against honestly a really great player as well and I had some chances, but in the third set I managed to hurt my leg. I'm running and I'm running, I'm running and then I feel this pop and I'm like, oh no. And I didn't have enough time to think about whether or not it was a good thing or a bad thing, but maybe I thought it was bad. And I guess my coach and a physio were telling me, call, call the trainer, but I've hurt my hamstring enough to know that there's nothing to be done once you hurt it. Like either you keep playing or you don't, but there's nothing you can do. So I did not call the trainer. Um, I think I just panicked and threw up on myself the rest of the match. Like I, I just had shots that I could like hit winners and I just was freaking out and I just like, get him out. <laughs> I was like going crazy and unfortunately walked off the court, not the winner of that match. And, you know, about a seven or eight hour encounter, which really were the craziest circumstances I've ever played in, in my long, 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 long career. Um, and I remember walking off the court just limping and I'm thinking, this isn't good. And so I go upstairs, still like, like do a full cool down. I like couldn't really stretch and, um, just kind of rode the bike and then I had my physio like work through the legs. She's like, I don't want to work through it that much. I don't want to work through it that much. And I was like, let's just work on it as I'm thinking, you know, Australian Open's coming up. But as the night progressed and as I ate cookies, because every when I lose up, my treat is sugar. <laughs> I'm eating cookies and like I'm sitting in bed and my leg hurts. And I'm like, that's all, never a good sign when you're in pain um, at rest. So. Uh, my leg's hurting. I really can't walk that well. And I wake up the next day and I tell my physio, that let's get a, let's get a um, MRI. So we get this MRI and I'm barely walking in this place, like shuffling, like, you know, I'm doing a shuffle, like a gangster lean. I'm like walking, barely taking steps. And so I got my results later that day and it was to no surprise that, you know, I had, I had some tears in my, at the, at hamstring attachment, but you know, I knew there's times where you know, there's other times where you know, but I knew that it was going to be a bad injury. And so um, that's the point where I you know, withdrew from the Australian Open. I had a wild card. It was so awesome. Thank you, Tennis Australia. Thank you, Craig, for that. Craig Tiley, awesome guy. But it wasn't for me and I wanted someone else to have that opportunity because I knew that I wouldn't have a chance to play. There was no chance and the good news is I got to finish, I got to visit a lot of my team in Australia. We have a great team from 11 down in Australia and um, we have our designer and also um, some of our e-commerce team there. So I went on down to Brisbane and had, we had the best time ever. That really lifted my spirits and then I came home. And to be honest, super overwhelmed by the injury because I've been injured a long time now and I couldn't believe I had to go back to rehab. Yes, Amy, I understand. I don't want to go back to rehab either. <laughs> so my sentiments. And I, I kind of spent the first week not even like seeing a doctor. Um, when I was in New Zealand, I just had an MRI and I didn't see a doctor and I felt just super overwhelmed. But after about a week, you know, I started setting up my doctor's appointments and started thinking about what was next for me and trying to really get a handle on like how much time it would take for me to, to get back. So I'm still in that process now. This is the kind of injury where you kind of have to let it rest a little bit. 
before you even can start to do serious rehab, but I've started. I'm going to ask my physio if I can come in and film some of that rehab so you can see it. Um, definitely a slow start. You, you know, you can't, you got to walk before you run, and right now I'm starting to walk pretty good, and hopefully I'll be running really soon. But for now, I will not be playing tennis. <laughs> um, and right now, the most comfortable thing for me is my Lazy Boy or my Joe Colombo chair. Um, which I copied my friend Riley Opelka and getting one. I always wanted one, and when he got one, I was like, getting one too. So with that being said, that is my injury update. I had a great start to the year, won a match, was playing really well, and was super happy with that until it just didn't go right. It doesn't always go your way, but I think my next step for me is to get to a place where I feel confident in my body again. There are very few times where I have had injuries where I've lost confidence. I think my knee injury before, I lost confidence. That was, that was the first time ever. And this one, I definitely um, need to build confidence in it again. So I'll get there, God willing, and I'll take you guys on this journey with me back to health, back to tennis, hopefully, and um, hopefully sooner than later. And I don't know exactly when, but I'll let you know. And until that time, I'll have even more time to create great content and keep you guys updated on me life. And I think, I think I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'll, I'll keep you updated. Let's just cross that bridge when we get there. And yeah, I hope you guys have been well. Happy 2023 and more to come. I'll see you guys soon.